welcome to Masters of Music Podcast. I'm Voldemort. I am Derek. This is episode 25. Yes, it is episode 25. Yeah, how are we going to beat last week's intro? It was so badass with Zach Brower and The Who. Well, Patrick, I thought of something funnier than 24. Let me hear it. 25. Roll the clip. Hey, Patrick. What? I thought of something funnier than 24. Let me hear it. 25. Whoa! And everyone, please like and subscribe. It really does help out a lot. Yes, and also thank you to our lovely friends at Lewitt Microphones. These mics are incredible condensers, and they have a whole selection of really badass. Yeah, hell yeah, and they make a sound. Awesome! <laughs> this week we have... Kalen Chase! He's an incredible vocalist and a guitar player, known for his work in Vimic and Korn, and he's done a bunch of session work. He's also working on his own solo record, and he's releasing a single on February 12th, 2021. Uh, it's a cover of Marcy Playground's Sex and Candy. It's going to be a real kick-ass, unheard version. Yeah, he's badass, guys, so you guys stick around. But it's time for Music News! What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Uh, well, I heard something. The Rolling Stones are releasing a chocolate bar, and it's called the Brown Sugar Chocolate Bar. Brown sugar? How come you taste so good now, baby? And that so song's actually about heroin, so it fucking makes no sense. I wonder if they're going to put heroin in that. Like Coca-Cola damn. used to put Coke? Yeah, that's right. That's a factual fact. Yeah. Historical fact. Yeah, dude, I can't wait for this heroin bar. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be so good. <gasps> But yeah, so what? I mean, that's really fun. That I wish, I mean, we know we all know those bands that really put themselves out there and try to, you know, like we were talking about Kiss earlier. Uh, they have action figures and probably a bunch of different kinds of things. But what kind of candy and chocolate bars would you want to have from other bands? Yeah, I know we were talking about this earlier, and I, I think like the Ted Nugent bar. Ted <laughs> Nugent. Yeah, that would be badass. Uh, 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 I was thinking, um, ooh. Dark Side of the Chocolate <laughs> <laughs> from Pink Floyd, maybe. We wrote a couple, of, we wrote a lot of ideas down. Um, Just rattle them off. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, we have a, a few ideas for badass chocolate bars, so. Yeah, like Finger 11, uh, Butterfinger 11. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Milky, Milky Gerard and Mikey Way from, <laughs> from My Chemical Romance. Twizzler sister, <laughs> our Twixted sister, uh, Kiss Cat Bar, <laughs> That's a good one. the Mick Mars Bar, uh, 30 Seconds to Mars Bar, uh, Jimmy Hen Twix, there's a lot of Twix ones in here, um, we already said Ted Nougat, uh, ooh, Eminem, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was good. M&M. Um, and you are saying that Madonna's chocolate bar would just... Yeah, it would just be called Madonna, and we won't know <laughs> if we'd like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> it would just be fucking Madonna. Madonna. She's all about Madonna. Yeah. Ooh, and the best one, actually, is the Derek Payday. That's the one, guys. That's the new one coming out 2022. Go ahead and put your votes in now. We'll come after this commercial break. Yeah. So don't buy his records. Don't buy my... F no, come on. <laughs> the money's in the chocolate. Actually, it's funny because I love paydays, which is funny. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? David Spade always used to say that his mom would eat paydays because he said it was healthy. <laughs> 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 it was a healthy chocolate because it had nuts on it. Yeah. Fucking and ridiculous. Is it chocolate? Or is it it's nougat? Isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, like it's like some fucking messed up shit. But okay. what other fucking crazy things uh, artists do? So there are plenty. So there are plenty of uh, there, and there's so many. You know, there's so many kinds of alcohols and things and drinks that all these rock stars make. There's the Kiss Cola that was a thing for a while. There's the Trooper beer, which I got this poster in Manchester. Um, from the Iron Maiden, and there's also the uh, Snoop Dogg actually just released a gin called the 
Indago Gin, like Indigo, but Indago with two Gs, the Indago Gin. So yeah, I'm excited for more of these incredible products. Yeah, it's badass. And what do you think if uh, if there was like a prize inside mm -hmm. uh, the fucking fucking Rolling Stones chocolate? Maybe like a golden ticket or something. Golden ticket, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I actually found out that if you find the golden ticket in the brown sugar chocolate bar, you get to meet all of the nurses who take care of each member of the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Yeah, it was reported on the Huffington Post, so check yep. that out. Check it out. Yeah, make sure that it, this is not fake news because it's not... Everyone write a comment down below to see if uh, you guys have any cool ideas for, like, Guns N' Roses. What would be their fucking candy bar, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what you would say. Yeah. November Rain Nougat? Maybe. <laughs> November. Welcome to the... <sighs> I don't know. I can't think of any. Or what about Corn's Candy Corn? Oh, Candy Corn! How do we not think of that? Yeah. Perfect segue into Kaylin Chase! Hey! Kaylin! Kaylin Chase! How you guys doing? We're doing good. good. How are you? Good. Um, I suck at uh, technology. Uh, I got a mic. Is uh, the audio okay? Yeah, it sounds yeah. great. Yeah. Oh, good. Then I'm not going to break anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, if you want to. Uh, you know, it'd be good, good, uh, good publicity, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> always. It's awesome. Too. So, how's it going in Nashville? You just moved there from LA, right? So I've been uh, working off and on here for the last few years, um, but after the pandemic and uh, work in LA, I pretty much uh, so we sold our house in LA, and now I'm out here. I still go to LA, and I'll be doing a lot of stuff out there. But now the home base is here, and uh, I'm I'm loving it. It's cold and dark, which appeases me. <laughs> ah, nice. Perfect. <laughs> it's good writing weather. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm actually doing pre-pro for the record, my new record right now. Oh, dope. Yeah, awesome. you, you have something coming out on the 12th. I do. Uh, so I put out a few singles, um, and uh, I'm doing a cover of uh, Sex and Candy by Marcy Playground. <laughs> oh, yeah. sick. Because uh, there's like 10 covers of that song, and they all fucking suck. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Not to diss those bands that everybody's trying, but nobody's just did like a hard and heavy fuck anthem for it. So I, I figured I'd take take the, the bait. Nice. Damn. The hard and heavy fuck anthem from Sex and Candy. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Getting getting rid of the heroin and, and putting the amyl nitrate into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Damn. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I actually met you a long time ago. I, I went to MI. Mm. And you, you came there uh, to do, like, a clinic or so yes. before. Yeah, and it was awesome. I just remembered you and, like, your fucking voice and everything. It was fucking amazing. Well, thank you very much. I'm, uh, I'm glad it was not shitty. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fucking awesome, dude. It was sick. And I heard your last, uh, the last song that, that you made a music video for, actually Pete uh, Thorne played on that. Uh, yes. Yes, he did. Yeah. That's so cool. Yep. Yeah, we're friends with Pete. Pete's, uh, Pete's one of my favorite. He's my favorite guitar player in LA uh, and pretty much everywhere. I mean, he's so freaking good and he's a cool dude. So yeah, yeah, the motherfucker just kills it. It's fucking yeah. He's got taste for days. His tones like I just turned him loose on the uh, song. I was like, here, just play it f through a few times and we'll grab what we like out of it. And uh, he came in, he did it, and he left. And I was like, that's the kind of re relationship I like because. If you spend too much time with me, you will eventually realize I'm a garbage person. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> damn, that's damn, that's sick though. Damn, Pete Thorne just comes in, he kills it, he leaves. He yeah. And puts then I still look like a decent person, and uh, he won't yeah. tell all his friends to not work with me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking sick, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, so Kalen, we. We want our our viewers and like everyone to know about like where you came from and how did you become you? Like how did Kalen become Kalen? Like, uh, let's see. A lot of head trauma. <laughs> uh, <laughs> multiple blows to the head and face uh, had a big part of it. Wow. Um, so I was I was born in Southern California uh, and uh, we we moved to Washington state, the northeast corner uh, in 1992 when i was eight years old mm -hmm. and that was right when the la riots and the uh earthquakes were crazy and 
So kind of how everybody's moving to Nashville now, everybody moved to Washington and Oregon back then. Mm. And so I grew up in uh, the country, 27 acres of, of land, 15 minutes away from a tiny town, an hour and a half away from Spokane. Uh, so I was in the boondocks. So uh, that 10 years of my life there kind of shaped the, uh, the gothy mid Northwest kind of lumberjack quality. So I, I, I learned how to work hard and I uh, also learned to hate the sun. <laughs> that kind of shaped everything that happened, but um, I, I was always into music. I came up in the church. Um, not, well, not really. We, we started going to church when life was getting especially shitty and hard. And it was a beautiful thing for the time. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was about 10, we started uh, going to the church and it was like not crazy religious. And we were playing rock and roll music for worship. And uh, when I started playing uh, in the worship team, you know, I started uh, really appreciating like, you know, the ambience and all this other stuff and, and the intensity of it. Right. And then that all went to shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, my Christian goth band got boycotted in an entire town and uh, the <laughs> right. church was not happy about it. And they didn't really, I understand that, you know, that's a hard thing. You don't want to like, you know, we, we looked like freaks, but we were a ministry band. We were, were doing drugs or humping anything. <laughs> right. so they didn't stand behind us. So I, I, we left the church. I tried to hold on to some of the ideals. And then I was like, you know what, though? I don't think God cares if I drink and fuck. So I'm going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and so then I started drinking and fucking and, uh, <laughs> and came down to L.A. to do uh, to be a student at Musicians Institute, where I proceeded to drink and fuck and uh, <laughs> play metal. Yeah, and uh, that was kind of the the first that was the first stage of of everything, and then everything kind of changed once I got the corn gig. Nice, and uh, that was crazy big audition. Um, I got the corn gig. I toured with them for two and a half years, and a couple times after that, and that kind of set me in the metal world. And I was in metal bands in L.A. Crucifix and all the changing. Uh, that's some shit still on the internet somewhere. <laughs> uh, but I was always what's that? Sorry about that. No, no, no. Sorry. So there was a little problem here. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, like, no worries. I, yeah, I we got a little crew here. <laughs> no, no. We got a crew of a, a lot of fuck ups in this room. Yeah. Good, good. I'm I'm <laughs> alone and fucking up. I'm a, so I'm a solitary fuck up. I like to take the blame because then people's expectations are low. So, um, so yeah, corn um, got me uh, in the door through a lot of stuff, and I I love playing metal. I was I love the screaming. I love the energy. I, I love the headbanging. I used to do backflips off the stage not land them <laughs> land on my back i love that <laughs> but i was also always into like elliot smith tom waits uh um, damn nice know, sigur ross godspeed you black emperor you know douchebag yeah. music yeah um, yep that i love uh because i'm a douchebag and <laughs> like, i played at a bar here and there drunkenly but and people would say caitlin why don't you do any of your other stuff and i just didn't have the time i was always doing guest things and studio work and screaming and teaching and um when i uh i finally got a chance to do it i i something would happen like i was going to start to do it and then um uh joey uh jorson who i played with in corn in 2007 wanted to do vivic yeah uh, and so i was like fuck yeah because he and i promised each other we'd do a band together and we recorded some songs that are out and there's a record that maybe will come out i don't know i don't have any <laughs> info and we i love the whole band we had a good time but that is you know pretty much on indefinite hiatus mm. and when that happened i was like you know it was nobody's fault really and it just happened and then i was working with the producer there uh kato Kandwada, who did our record mm. um and we started working together doing studio gigs in la like voice like i did the lego batman movie one of the songs <laughs> uh, Shit. produced uh vocal produced pop evil um saying on that a bunch of, i worked with him constantly he became one of my dearest friends and he was the one who said kaylin why aren't you doing your, your fucking solo stuff? Like do this stuff, make this record. I know you like doing the metal stuff, but you know, do you, why don't you do this? I was like, oh, I, I want to, but I don't have time. He's like, fucking do it. I'll help you. <laughs> and then that, that asshole decided to get killed uh, in a motorcycle accident. Oh, wow. And uh, that was probably the closest friend that's ever died. I've, I've had people die, but that was a couple years ago and almost three years ago now. And, that wow. pretty much took me out of the equation for a second. And I had to either, I had to realize, okay, you know, I've been so close so many times to different things and something has happened that derails the plan. And so I was like, well, I'm not going to derail the plan. I'm not going to shift. I'm not going to pivot um, as much as I can without Cato, 
who was a huge influence on me. And so I just started working and um, I ended up calling the producer that he worked with an engineer named Phil English at El Dorado studios in LA mm. and said, Hey, uh, Cato was working with me and I show you my stuff and started working with him. He's the guy who engineered and produced let them come and good things um, Damn. and sex and candy that is coming out. So uh, mm. I just rebuilt and started again and uh, kind of uh in an homage to Cato who would never stop doing anything. So uh, that's where we are now. That's my, my whole life summed up with a lot of drinking and fucking in between. <laughs> <laughs> I am now working on my music uh, and it's not technically metal, but it's still really fucked up. Yeah. 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 And dude, like the influences from your songs are like, let them come is different than every, than like, I don't even know where you got that. And I love that. Like, that's Thank the best you. part about it. That one was the weirdest one um, yet. So I always, I liked every great song. This is something Cato taught me. Every great band, you can kind of take two influences. Like the Beatles had like the uh, Buddy Holly, Elvis, rock, rock and roll, and the like the three black singer chick, like, you know, do poppy <laughs> stuff. Yeah. That's yep. how they combined it. Rolling Stones was like Chicago blues and, and rock and roll. Like you can always pick yeah. two influences. So I was like, what if I do this for a song? And I was mm. like, I want to do a song that sounds like Adele oh. and David Bowie Earthling era. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I figured out, so I needed a big chanty thing and I needed like a really like deep down droney, like hypnotic groove. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I, I kept telling people that that's what I wanted to do. And everybody's like, okay, Kaylin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Adele and David Bowie from Earth, like okay. Like, yeah. And I was sitting in my room doing working on some music with my brother, and I just had my guitar tuned like to low B, and I was just going bum bum bum, and I was like thinking of cello lines, yeah. and I was like, bum 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 bum, and my brother turns around, and was like, what the fuck is that? I was like, the beginning of this <laughs> song. So I had <laughs> I had that little musical drone. And then I I just started say I just started making sounds say bye bye to the old say bye and I was like say bye bye to the old way and then I turned into words, and the rest of it just wrote itself. So I had an idea, of the two influences, and I just waited till I found one part and then got the other. And that's so it wasn't like a constructed, purposeful thing. I just had an idea that I wanted to try, and it worked. Wow, my God, I've never uh, tried like I never thought like to approach writing in that way. You know, you think about it like maybe in producing, but never yeah. like creating. It's I think every writer uh, should always try something new, even if it doesn't work. What it does is it 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 pulls your brain away from your your rhythm. Right. Like you know, I have a, a I can get into ruts. Everybody does. So just be like, you know, sometimes I write like a a blunderbuss shotgun. Tom Waits quote like he mm. just fires things at the wall, you know. Yeah. And so I'll just write phrases or words, or I'll just like I don't even have music, uh, and I'll just think of cool lines, and I won't even think of rhythms. And then if if and then if I have to figure out how to make those two lines work together, I, that's that's my uh, I basically fifty two card pick up a song. Yeah. I'll just grab it and see if it works. Sometimes it's utter shit, yeah. but change it up. Like if and if that's how you work all the time, then start at the beginning and write a song from beginning to end and see if you can do it. You might, I think more often than not, you'll find something that's new, fresh and more and more of your favorite than you'd be expecting because we know how we write. We all know how we write, change it up. Yeah. Oh my God. That's awesome, man. That's so sick. Blunder bus. I just, I'm, I'm ripping off wisdom from other people. This is not, uh, I didn't do, I didn't create this. I just drink and fuck. Yeah. <laughs> that's the <laughs> most wisdomest thing, though. know, I'm, that's, the, that's what I want. We should call this episode is drink and fuck. So it's drink and fuck with Kylan says. <laughs> yes, Damn. I stand, I endorse that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. And if you want, you could put a little uh, asterisk and say responsibly. I don't endorse that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you, for your own, for your own purposes so that you know somebody's hey i drink and fuck to death my ghost <laughs> is suing you uh, <laughs> send him to me i'll exercise the motherfucker yeah <laughs> damn dude this fucking sick. like hearing you talk about uh like doing being in a, like a gospel christian gospel gospel metal band or like it's kind of crazy because i heard one of your songs um i think it was like Dear God, when you like, I hate your fans. Yeah, dude, that's fucking insane. Like, I was like, okay, for sure you don't 
you you don't have no interest in Christianity or whatever religious background. But that just like I was like that makes even more sense now. Maybe it's beautiful. I uh, so I I know a, a lot of Christians that I actually respect so yeah. much because they are they do what the actual tenet of the religion is, which is to just love mm -hmm. and treat their neighbor like like Jesus said himself. What's the most important? Love yeah. God with all your heart and tr love your neighbor like yourself. And mm -hmm. if you think about it, uh, even in the Bible, we're all God. Yeah. And even if that means there's nothing after and there's nothing, you die and the lights are off, or you go to Mars or reincarnate as a piece of shit. I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. I do not care. You're correct. But I have no issue with uh, religion in itself. I have no uh, issue with people who want to believe something. Uh, don't be a dick about it. Right. Yeah. You know, there's a, it's style points. If you have style, you're doing it right. So you can believe whatever you want. Don't get don't shit in my cereal and I won't shit in yours. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Wow, dude, yeah. But that I use I use the Bible and uh, religious imagery. I I mean I use a lot of where I came up with with the church. I studied theology, mostly apocalyptic end of the world theology because I thought that was metal as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I I use uh, the Bible and other religious texts for like inspiration for stuff all the time. So I, I there's always going to be that that chunk of of my life in my writing. Um, and honestly, I don't think the good Lord has any issues with me, uh, but his fans certainly do. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah. Which makes me giggle. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh Dude, yeah. Just I, when I heard that, I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I'm actually gonna do a, a, a more electro version of that, uh, like a kind of more of an indie alt rocky weird version of that, and for my own stuff. Like that was the Americana thing I did yeah. with my brother, which I loved. Um, and I was, uh, and that's a good, another thing to do with your music, no matter what, even if it's a metal song, strip it down mm. and try to play it with just a, a piano or acoustic guitar. Uh, cause if it sounds even decent like that, you got that Tom Morello wrote all his riffs on an acoustic guitar. Like when you take oh. it down to the core of something. So I always write all my songs. If I can't figure out a way to play them on an acoustic guitar, I kind of like, well, this is going to be... Now, there's always exceptions, but nine times out of ten, if you can't fucking sit down and play your song for somebody with a guitar or a piano, what are you doing? Right. Yeah, yeah, I always thought that was, like, the test of a good song. Or especially a good singer. For me, like, I love watching people sing acoustic stuff. Like, when yeah. I watch, Cor like, Audio Slave, like, Chris Cornell sing with an acoustic guitar, that's how I know he can fuck... He's a, an artist. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when there's you can't pull no, off... Uh, there's no, there's no nothing to hide behind when it's just you and an instrument. Um, mm. You know, that's that's the the test. I, uh, I've done a lot of acoustic stuff, and uh, fortunately, I don't get stage fright. But man, I've looked at some videos where I'm like, I fucking suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, No, dude, you were drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to drink and fuck, but don't fuck up your show, kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to my to my defense, it was, uh, you know, impromptu, and I was already planning on being drunk so it wasn't my fault they gave me a guitar oh, you'll okay. find some videos on the internet where you're like wow caitlin you sound shitty and I'm like, that's that's i'm just gonna say every time i sound bad it was not my fault that's what i'm gonna uh, do. Okay. <laughs> so, oh cool so you don't when you perform live uh, you don't you know you don't uh do any i know some musicians take a shot or do what oh, have no, a no, beer I, I have a shot of jägermeister before i sing oh cool uh, because uh that i'm not endorsing this Right. But if you happen to drink and you are a singer, uh, don't drink a lot before you play. But a Jägermeister was eventually a, 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 sorry, can't speak. I'm I'm actually sober for January. That's why I can't function. <laughs> but um, Jägermeister was originally created as a cough syrup, oh. and it's really really good for the throat. So I would take a, a shot of room temp Jäger if I could uh, before I perform, mm. and then I'd have a couple beers on stage, and that's it. And then wow. afterwards, whatever the fuck you want. So you wow. got to maintain, like, especially, you know, if you're the, the front man, the singer, your show, if somebody else is wasted or just a bad musician, you're the first person they're going to say, hey, man, your show sucked, dude. What was your problem? It's like, well, so I have to be as even if the band isn't the per best that night, you know, I have to deliver 100 percent because sometimes you can save the show. And I'm not saying right. singers are more important. Right. And everybody's the same you know we need everybody but right. singers are the first line that's the first thing you see and yeah. generally the last thing you think of mm -hmm. so 
our responsibility to bullshit our way through a potentially shitty show, mm -hmm. we have that responsibility. Right. So, yeah. uh, so I, I don't think people should get, you know, everybody's different. Some people can drink a bottle of wine while they play. And I, you know, I can drink a bit while I play, but I purposely don't try to push the envelope and find out because yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be sloppy. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you know, Kalen, I'm like, I'm also a lead singer and I was just every freaking month I'm learning a new thing about my voice. Like, oh yeah, maybe like, like I was, I was in the studio since November till last week. And like, I realized toward the end, I was like, maybe I should, I, I, like, I didn't drink at all. And then like toward the end, I was like, oh fuck, let me, let's see what happens. I have like a beer or two, like the night before. And then the neck, that track that I've been struggling with for the last week sounded baller. I'm like, whoa, this is so weird. Like I've never like ever tried that every now and then, like you unlock a little thing, but only like a, like you say, like a little amount or a specific yeah. thing or. I have, um, I have a Bud Light in the, the vocal booth with me every time I sing. Wow. Uh, I barely sip on it. I'm not saying that works for everybody, but it's just my little thing. Right. You know, I don't get wasted at the studio, but like I'll drink some beers. It's my my guy. If if you're struggling with something, sometimes taking like here's my most important studio rule. I don't do 20 takes in a row. Mm. If if it's not working after three or four times, I get I get away from it. Because what ends up happening is you get in your head, mm. and you never. And a singer is the worst person. Don't ever listen to yourself in the studio. I don't listen to myself. Mm. We are too close to the thing. We don't know what the fuck we're talking about, and we're not <laughs> hearing what it sounds like we already have a distorted view of our voice so right. i always have one person in the room listening whether it's the engineer producer or somebody i trust that says hey man that sounded great i believe them you right. know I'll, if i want to try something i will but so if i'm doing a part and i'm on take four and it's just not happening yeah all right take a break i'll go get a beer i'll go to another song right I'll come back to it fresh and generally i can nab it in the first take after that Wow. Don't torture yourself. It's not fucking football. Put me in, coach. Let me in the line. I don't yeah. <laughs> it's, there's no machismo doesn't work with with vocals. You have to be completely present, not overthinking it. Not when you're singing. I, my favorite thing is when a singer comes in who's got a big chorus or a big run, uh -huh. and they sing, and they're so worried about that run, and sometimes they'll hit it perfectly. And I'll be like, Hey man, you did that thing you were worried about. Everything else sucked. Your yeah. verses that were easy sucked. <laughs> Your choruses sucked because you were spending the whole time thinking, thinking about, about fucking it. that part. You have to become hundred percent instinctual and present when you're singing. Yeah. Um, every, I think in all music, but like, I'm not, I mean, it's kind of a dick move if you're giving somebody a gift of music to be like doing your taxes or worrying about something, you should be living in that note or whatever bass part drum beat the second you're doing it. So not overthinking, not overtaking it. Take a fucking break, grab a drink, uh, take a dump. I don't know. Yeah. Whack yeah. Off. Do something to separate yourself from that, that grind that, that doesn't produce anything good. Wow. Damn. Damn. That's fuck. I wish I, I, I wish we talked like two months ago. <laughs> I wish we recorded any of this. <laughs> no, we're recording. We're recording. <laughs> Damn, man. Also like, Man, yeah, like Freddie Mercury would always have a couple beers like on his piano and shit. I'm like, how do you do oh, that yeah. shit, man? Like, and Axel too, you know, a couple like a beer or two on his thing. Like, keeps you loose. Uh, it keeps you. It, it's it's if you enjoy it, and and it's something that you like, and you know your voice. I think it's a great thing if you're if you're a drinker. But it should not be a crutch. Absolutely. Um, that's why I always take a month off drinking every year. Nice. Um, give or take. I used to do it in February because it was a shorter month, but then the Super Bowl was on February. Was Damn. Like, <laughs> um, Damn it, dude. Caleb, I used to do Februarys too. I used to just like, yeah. it was every, but now it's like, instead of Black History Month, it's like Blackout History Month for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I like what you did there. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's fucking hilarious how just one month, you know, everybody's like, dude, you're going to get so bombed when you start drinking again. I was like, dude, no. I've been doing this a while, so I do my month off. It's fine, and then I, uh, I immediately, I'm, I actually started a little late this month, so I've got I think till the fifth, and the Super Bowl is the seventh, so I might just wait <laughs> till the uh, the seventh and and just go fucking ballistic. Because yeah. I want to make, I want to like, I want to pass out and wake up where I passed out. Like I want to, I don't want to <laughs> see the end of the game uh, <laughs> or the beginning. I I, I, I want to see what happens because it's been a while and uh, I've been behaving myself, so I want to. Mm -hmm. I, I know this under the same starry night, Super Bowl Sunday, February 7th, mm -hmm. 
probably gonna shit myself. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is a Kalen Chase guarantee. <laughs> Damn, we're gonna put it on our calendars. Yeah, I'm gonna set my alarm. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. shit. Hey, if if I can if I can still function, I I'll maybe I'll do a Facebook Live or something. Yes, <laughs> please. Oh watch, my god. Can watch me uh, devastate my body with gin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that your drink? Is it gin? It's a. I'm, I'm a gin man. As a, it's my adult, like gin and soda water, just a nice little sip. Have a cocktail here and there. Nice. Uh, it's very nice, very very grown up, and it's the lowest calorie, lowest sugar, because I'm an old mm. man now. <laughs> Damn, hey, uh, Kalen, would you say you're like, man? I love your freaking voice. I love the tone. I love the rasp, the intention, and like, are you? Would you call that like an alto? I don't. Uh, alto is a, is a more of a female register, but I have. <laughs> um, I'm technically a baritone. Oh, uh, wow. Which is the lower register, but I sing tenor mm. and alto stuff as well. But like where I, I actually am comfortable, yeah, all that stuff. That's oh. where I, but the problem is nobody wants to pay for that. Everybody wants to <laughs> hire shit. So yeah. I did opera when I, when I came up uh, and I have about, uh, this is not, a, a, I'm not flexing. This is just the truth. I have about four mm. octaves from low to, uh, to falsetto. And yeah. uh, I, I don't. I try to avoid using them because I don't. Unless you pay me a lot of money. Yeah. I don't yeah. Use the top octave. Like yeah. the Lego Batman movie, I was like Batman. All that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking pay me for that. Yeah. That's um, sick. But I love typo negative too, so I do practice a lot of low singing. Nice. Uh, so that's that's the thing. I so I would. I am a true baritone, but I sing tenor and alto stuff as well. Nice. Damn. I was wondering if you if you're if you're comfortable to talk about like how was the audition process in corn because a lot of people like audition process and different things are crazy like my brother will probably cut this out he had an audition oh, yeah. for uh, David Lee Roth oh last yeah you year. didn't have to yeah I, I it, have to cut this out that's his well you can't see it but I have his this was like the set list for the David Lee Roth tour oh, uh, nice. last year or it was supposed to be last year I suppose but. But yeah, I tried, and and I, we're still doing the podcast. And now we're doing a podcast. Long story short, we're doing a podcast <laughs> about it. <laughs> he he turned it down, and he's like, "This is a better idea." Yeah. Right. So, I've done I've done I, a few of those, and I just sucked. Uh, it happens, dude. Auditioning, it comes down. It's it's everything. I think you could put it in whatever aspect of your life. We're always auditioning for something, whether right. it's trying to make friends, connect, get a business job regular job interview get a whatever it is we're always trying to get something yeah uh and so there's two things that happen you either let go of your preconceived notions and your own body and personality dysmorphia mm -hmm. and just be the best for whatever it is or you get nervous and fuck yourself right so yeah. um the audition for corn was interesting because i was uh Drinking in a bad way. I mm. was uh, kind of, I'd been burned out. I've been to LA for like four years and, you know, I was having fun. I did the party thing. I did the music school thing. I was doing the band thing and uh, we were big fish in a small pond. And, but I was feeling like money was shit. I couldn't get a job. I, then I started doing window glazing in Santa Barbara. So I take the bus up <laughs> with my godfather, mm. very Italian style. Yeah. Get on up here, Sonny. We'll do some window glazing. <laughs> 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 I was kicked to shit. I was at a low point, sleeping on a bunk bed with my uh, one of my oldest friends, uh, in a in a shitty apartment on Formosa in Hollywood. Mm. And my brother was a head of the music, uh, well, uh, assistant to the head of the music department at M M I, uh, mm. the music business program. So, yeah. um, I'm sure you guys know Barry Squire. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So Nick calls me in the morning after I don't know. It was probably close to noon, which is when business began for me back then. But I don't. He calls me. He's like, "Hey, Corn has an audition." So I hung up on him. <laughs> yeah. Calls me back. He's like, "Hey, dude, you should do this. It's for a background vocalist thing." Hang up on him. Mm. Uh, he calls me back and he's like, "Listen, motherfucker, <laughs> what do you got going on right now? I mean, you need to not be an idiot." And I and I kind of had a head out in my ass moment. Mm. So that this was so this is if I had gone in with the I'm too cool to audition for another band. I'm a singer. I immediately threw that away. Now the next thing I had to get over was being a fucking drunken buffoon mm -hmm. i didn't but um <laughs> so my brother and sister basically my sister was on guard duty for the next three days i went to hot topic and got kicked out uh for <laughs> listening to the new single over and over 
because uh, I couldn't afford the record. Yeah. So my brother buys me the CD. I learn the song they need. It was a half step higher than my usual full voice that I needed to do. Mm. So I did a bunch of opera training, like to get this like like whole thing. That's a long story, but I, wow. for some reason I was like positive about it. I was like, I'm, I, all right, is that a note? I I can't, I can't hit it full voice. I'll make it. I'll figure it out. Right. And I didn't escape. I didn't uh, get hammered. My sister watched me the whole time because I kept trying to wander off. And we go to MI to do the audition. I'm wearing a shirt that says "Ass is the new mouth" that I had made. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! I, I had just started uh, teaching, uh, like doing open counselings at MI. So some of the su- su- uh, students were like, "Ah, oh, you're auditioning!" I was like, "Oh, thank you for the compliment." But it's anybody's game. <laughs> what I did was I went in with humor. I headbanged my ass off. I looked like a fool because there was nobody else. We played to a tape. Yeah, right. But I, I just got over my bullshit. I had fun, mm. and mostly I pretended to have fun because I didn't wasn't having fun. Yeah. I, I didn't want to do this. But I, I, I did the act. I was just polite, shook hands, said thank you, wore a funny shirt, headbanged my ass off, sang the part right, and I left. And I got a call back. And I had to go to Malibu to audition with their music director. And I got another call back. And this time we go, I'm heading up to Santa Barbara because I figured I'd either be celebrating or commiserating with my family because that's where they live. <laughs> so I had my buddy drive me up to Malibu and we get in there and be like, hey, John's going to come in. I was like, okay. So in walks Jonathan Davis, his wife, and uh, two bodyguards. Wow. Damn. And they're huge and buff. <laughs> Damn. My buddy waits outside. I get in there, and and they were telling me the whole time. It's like, listen, it, it's been a long process. This is the first time they've been doing like backing bands. This is after Head left. They had yeah. a guitar player, and they, they got a keyboard and percussionist and all this stuff. They were like doing this. It's like, this is kind of weird for them, so don't be discouraged if he doesn't choose or say anything. I was like, that's fine. I kind of surrendered to the idea. Right. Um, and there was this moment of like, oh shit, should I be nervous? I was like, why? He takes a shit like everybody else. So mm-hmm. I had to like fake myself out of being nervous and intimidated. I was like, just do what you do, sing the parts. Right. So I had studied, I'd done it, and we just sang a few things. And he said, hold on, we have to isolate your vocals because we can't tell where your voice and John voices is. Because I'd worked on, I do a lot of vocal emulation, like yeah. sounding like somebody, which is a good trick to learn as long as you know how to sing like yourself. Mm-hmm. and he and then i i wait for like a minute i'm just standing there like a chotch dick and uh it's like, don't worry about it whatever happens happens don't be disappointed just trust and he said hey come on in you got the job damn, damn. so i was like oh that was quick and uh that was the beginning of it so three auditions uh just being personable like they asked if i drank and did drugs on this paper i was like yeah i said within reason <laughs> and i i was just i just tried to be the best person I could be. Right. Uh, didn't get worried, and I and being self conscious is illogical. Yeah. Who gives a shit what people think? Mm. I mean, and that I know that's an old adage, but like, I mean, you got to just be if 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 you do the best you can, and the person you're like, whether it's a boss or a relationship, doesn't like you, if you honestly are doing the best you can, not being a chotch dick, mm-hmm. then you have nothing to worry about. You yeah. know, if if people don't like your humor, fuck them. If people don't like your style of music or the sound of your voice, fuck them. Yeah. Right. You know, if you if you're doing if you like it and it's technically viable, if you can back it up, like if you sing like, ah, uh, don't sing anymore, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or go and take, or, or take vocal lessons. But you, yeah. I've learned with discernment, within reason, nobody has the right to make you feel bad, and nobody can make you feel less. It's you doing it to yourself. You have no right. fucking excuse. So yeah. don't be self conscious. Have fun. Damn. And also that uh the way you made fun like that the way you uh emulated a bad singer still better than the way I sing. <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's <laughs> like god damn well, I wish god I had that damn noise. Damn you, Chase. What? what instrument do you play? I'm a guitar player. So That's right. So yeah. you don't have to worry about it. You get more <laughs> pussy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. play guitar man yeah I, I i suck at playing guitar but i do it a lot and i just use a bunch of effects to uh, make me sound good so um so i have i you know guitarists and vocalists we are the most annoying of all the uh you're always noodling not you but guitar yeah. players always noodling making noise wanting attention singers getting attention and wanting more and always having to say something so i got yeah. both I hate <laughs> that's why i when the auditions and all this stuff i have to lie and say you're good you're great be humble it's horrible <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, nah, man, you're the best. This is fucking yeah. badass. Ah, thank you. All right, since you say it, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm working on self-love. <laughs> My wife's into hippie shit, so I have to learn all of the terms. Like, you know, you practice self-care. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Matt. Matt, I said. Yeah. <laughs> Get on Talkspace. That's like the app everyone uses now. Oh, what whoa. the fuck is that? It's like a fucking therapy app. Like, you can just text oh. someone, so then oh, they, no. they text you back. But then they don't fucking text you on time, so you end up committing suicide before that shit fucking happens. See, that's if you have time to text for help. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's like if if, if if it's like if I don't get a text back, I'm ending it. <laughs> and not dissing on people who committed suicide. Well, they don't care. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think we should be using text. I mean, they're, they're, they've got an online, like, you can look at somebody and talk to a doc. Like, yeah. I think we can safely say there's a bridge too far. Text therapy is a bridge too fucking far. <laughs> I haven't gotten, no one's DM me. Yeah. Where's my DM? DM me back. Yeah. And they send DM all these, me. they send you a fucking emoji, like, crying face. Like, that's it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. It's a fucking. Uh, yeah. Uh. Yeah. I would be I would be a terrible text therapist because I don't like texting. Uh, so I'd probably I'd probably be like wrong number who dis. <laughs> that might be the best one. Like we'll call it Rock Space or something. Rock Doc Therapist. Yeah. Oh no no Rock Doc's already taken. I'm hoping to get back on the road so I can find me a Rock Doc. Nom 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 nom. <laughs> oh yeah. Damn. Um, I I I'm in pain, doctor. Why? It's like look at me. I wake up with this every day. Give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> Just give me a prescription pad. I'll fill in the blanks. Yeah. <laughs> I have to deal with this. Yeah. Damn. Nah, man. So there's an opioid crisis, Kaylin. That's an opioid stigma. Don't make fun of that. People are dying. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. no, stop. Everybody stop taking them. I'll do it. <laughs> I've got. I'm, I'm good. Everything's fine. You just. You guys need to stop. If you keep killing yourselves with opioids, stop it. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I. I give you my solemn pledge. I'll take care of it. Damn. <laughs> Kalen takes some responsibility. Yes. <laughs> you know that's what happens. With age comes maturity. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. The All final right, five. Man. Final five. Number one, Kaylin, what is the most important piece of gear or secret weapon when on tour or in the studio? As far as, uh, well, if, as far as singing, uh, the yes. most important, uh, for singing, of course, it's, uh, it's maintenance, water, you mm. know, uh, just uh, the whole kit and caboodle. But um, for me, but the most important gear, uh, piece of gear is uh, my Bud Light. Nice. Damn. Okay. It's a safety. Like I said, don't have a crutch. I don't even drink that much of it, but I have it in the room with me. It's my. It's my crutch. I have one. Fuck off. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, that's like, that's good. It, like, kind of keeps you steady just in case you yeah. need it, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Damn. Nice. It's fucking badass. Okay. Number two. Number two. What is your most memorable or crazy story from the road? Okay. <laughs> Memorable as PD, uh, crazy, you can go whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> well, unfortunately, they live hand in hand. There's, there's, <laughs> two, there's, there's, I'm gonna, I'm going, you can edit this pause out because I've got two runners. So I'm going <laughs> to choose one. Uh, okay. This is the craziest. This is crazy and memorable. So we were in Denmark. Shout out to my Danes. <laughs> yeah. uh, and we were, it was European tour. We were, it was winter. So like it would like get dusky and it was dark, uh -huh. um, if I'm correct. Or it could have been the summer version. It was the same thing. It was either really bright all the time or really fucking dark all the time. And we just finished playing and we went out. Uh, me and a couple of the guys went out and we we're just ha having fun with some people from the show. So we're sitting around and there's a NHL hockey player who was home for the, for the things. And I'll tell you this right now. People think musicians party hard and actors and comedians party hard. Yeah, they, they live kind of in the same area. Then there's uh, two steps above them. One step above is chefs. Damn. <laughs> Fuck you up. You can't hang with chefs. Damn. And there's one step above chefs. Hockey player. Damn, <laughs> dude. Fuck my life. <laughs> yeah. So 
we're so we're getting tipsy. This guy's like got a tray of like frenet or some Danish like Jaeger Damn. thing, which was gnarly. He's these little shots and he's going, oh, God, he's throwing one before it had his shoulder. <laughs> and I'm like getting I'm like, I can drink pretty hard at this time and I'm young and virile and I'm like, This is crazy, we're gonna have a bad time later. <laughs> so, but I'm trying to be polite. So he's getting crazy, throwing the glasses like a Viking and nobody cares. So finally I go to the restroom. Across from us who I haven't noticed, uh, were some big giant dudes in leather jackets. Danish people are generally big and there's some people over there and they're kind of hanging out with the group. I haven't noticed. The biggest one walks into the stall next to me. And I granted I'm five, five. This guy was, I'm not exaggerating over six, seven. Jesus. Damn. I don't know where that is. And there was boots, but let's just put, put it right around there. Yeah. So of course he's like just this much taller. My dick's out. I'm like, and he leans over. He's like, do you use protection? What? what the fuck? <laughs> so I have a shy bladder. I, I, I think the body is funny. I like indecent exposure. Can't do it as much now with the new political climate and social climate. Mm -hmm. But I used yeah. to throw my wiener around all the time. But yeah. if I'm trying to tinkle, I yeah. can't really be bothered. Yeah. My stream abruptly stops. <laughs> I say, um, I say, well, yeah, I travel a lot. And I think, you know, practicing safe sex is important. I was like, am I going to get raped? Yeah, seriously. And can I be quick enough to try to rape him back? And <laughs> uh, just do a quick turn. Yeah. And he's like, pulls out a chain. Not a teeny chain, not a wallet chain, but an actual chain from his big leather jacket. Whoa. And it goes crunk <laughs> onto the ground. He's like, this is my protection. I was like, buddy, that scares the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And he kind of chuckles and I run away and wash my hands. I did wash my hands. <laughs> um, so I go back out and I saw so their crew's over there. And one of them's kind of, I was like, hey, what do you guys like the show? And what's, what's your deal? And they're like, oh, that, he points to an old guy sitting there who had just got out of prison for like 15 years. He's like a crime boss in Denmark. Damn. These are his mafia henchmen. Fuck so shit. I'm hanging out with a fucking psycho hockey player <laughs> and the Danish mafia. Damn, dude. So I say, okay, now I know what this evening is. Time yeah. to ingratiate myself. Mm -hmm. So the big guy comes out and says, hey, buddy, did you like the story? He's like, yes, my niece is a huge corn fan. I can't do uh, Danish accent, so I'm just going to sound Russian, but because <laughs> it's fun for me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's awesome. She's a big fan. She's like, she loves it, but she's too young to come out. I was like, yeah, too young to come out with the Danish mafia is what's going <laughs> on. So I, I, I pull off my corn sweatband. I was like, hey, man, this is going to be a little gross, but if you want to wash this, you can give it to her from the band and he stands up all six foot seven of him he takes it he puts it in his pocket then he takes me out of my seat and lifts me gently to his face <laughs> he says, i will not forget this and then gives me a crushing bear hug <laughs> my feet are dangling a good foot and a half off the floor and then he places me down gently and we begin to party and now i'm the danish mafia's favorite person yeah. over the old guy yeah we get crazy obliterated we go to some pool hall where uh it's going off and they're like, we're going to order girls and drugs. I was like, yay, that's fun, I'm young. And then we look at the clock because the light has never changed. We're like, bus call was 10 minutes ago. Oh, and I was fuck. like, right, why, guys, why couldn't we have done this like four hours ago when I ingratiated myself to you? Now I have no Danish whore. Oh. So come back to Dana, uh, Daneland, uh, Denmark, there it is. Uh, I'd like to say, if you guys are all still alive and, and flourishing, I would like those drugs I, not the not the prostitutes anymore. I'm a married man, but I will take the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, send them to Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I want to go to Denmark. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I don't want to shit where I eat, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm, clean living when possible, dirty living when necessary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn, dude. Fuck yeah. Yes, dude. That's amazing. <laughs> the rest of these will probably be succinct, but I figured you guys needed a, a good one there. That was a long one. <laughs> so good. Damn. Damn. This one might be also a little bit long, too. Oh, yes. I, I can be succinct. You'll, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What Number three. What are your tips for songwriting? We kind of covered it. Uh, yeah. The, but I will sum this up very easy. There's The, the thing to avoid is the blank page. Mm. Like, when people write songs, they'll start writing a verse, or they'll write a chorus, and then they stare. And they don't have a verse, so they don't have a last line of a chorus. And what happens? How many people do we know? And to ourselves, it's happened that just have nothing. They have part, like they don't have songs. They have parts of songs, and they just move away. They leave. Mm. Don't do that. We're why are you, and this is the self-conscious thing. 
you're self-conscious about writing something bad. It's only you in the room. Right. Get your shit together. Write some bullshit. Yeah. Fill in the blanks. Right. I will I will just fill in the blanks with utter shit. The page will be 80% garbage. Mm. And guess what happens? I got the good stuff. So I'll start fixing the garbage. Mm -hmm. Move that, yeah. change that, fill up the you can work with shit. You can't work with nothing. So mm. my tip for songwriting is don't stop. Don't leave empty space. Fill the space and and change it and edit. You can always take away. But you, if you're if you just stare at nothing for a long time, you're going to have tunnel vision. Nothing will happen. So don't be afraid to write garbage because it's just a first fucking draft. Damn. Dude, I fucking love that, man. Holy shit. I'm just going to like write a bunch of shit right now. <laughs> a bunch of garbage. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Yes. That's gonna be the second album you guys release. Yeah, just trash or garbage. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember the second step, though. You have to turn the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, don't stop there. Yeah. Don't yeah. stop there. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Damn. Fucking dope. So number four. Number four. What is your favorite lick or technique that has helped your playing? But it can work for vocals. Or okay. Uh, well, quickly for guitar, it's um, soundscape stuff. I love ambient sounds, making. The guitar sound like another instrument treating yeah. it like a violin mm. um treating it like a cello mm. so being playing with soundscape is really good after you get like after you're comfortable enough making guitar sound good without anything on it mm. have a blast so effect pedals tonal shifts it, it, it helps you create i think musically right. to change it up because same thing you have to change things up uh the most important technique for vocals this is what i i hammer into people when i teach them is using the the chest resonance when mm. we sing everybody who tries to sing high you can see it when an untrained singer does it they lift their head mm. and they thin their voice out because their mind's eye is telling them that high notes are up mm. it's not the case high notes are out mm. and the higher you go the more foundation you need a pyramid is only as tall as its foundation mm. the little point doesn't matter that's lifted up by the giant base so this is using chest voice and learning how to to power your voice with that and not with the throat and the head is I think the most important thing for a vocalist. Wow. Damn, Damn. dude. Holy shit. Hey, absolutely. Yeah. You need that and fit. It, yeah. This is what I teach <laughs> in my lessons. I charge out the ass. If anybody wants any not <laughs> discount, nice, oh, yeah. dude. but not much of one. <laughs> oh dude. I would, I would actually love a vocal lesson with you. I would love one. All right. We, we, we can sort that out and I will actually give you a friend's discount. It's, Oh. I, I like you, all right. Damn, dude. <laughs> that'd be sick, man. Oh, yeah, awesome. Okay, number five. Number five. The last question: What is the best advice, even though you've given so much already, that you would give to a person looking to do with you what you do? Okay. Uh, actually, I, I will veer a bit. This is all encompassing. Mm. Follow, follow some simple rules. Uh, be on time. Be humble. Shut up and listen. Mm. Just listen. Find your find your spots to to be endearing. You know, find your spots to connect and and remember people. Like make connections. The the only reason that that I've gotten anywhere is because of the people around me that have believed in me and lifted me up. And the only reason they did that is because I was a good person to them. Work and collaborate. Work with different people. Work in different styles. Uh, be be everything to everyone when you can be and always be yourself. Right. Fuck yeah. Wow. Damn. That dude. was deep as fuck, yo. Yeah. That <laughs> <was deep> as <laughs> fuck. <laughs> there, I had to I had to end on a better note than that horse shit. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> and drink and fuck. And drink and fuck. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Damn man. No. That's awesome, yeah. That's there's so many things people think that talent is the only thing that gets them through, but it's n that's just a little part of it. Absolutely, that that's that's your talent is your fucking business. Like yeah. that's your job to work on that. How you present yourself and live and exist, and the image you convey, bounces back off everything. And the second that you start creating something that's for others, it's it's not yours anymore. You don't get to call it art. It's up to the people. That's, yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. So just try not to be a dickwad and, and you'd be amazed and practice your instrument a bit and watch what happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the death of the art author. 
kind of idea. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What's that? What's the death of the author? It's that uh, idea that when we create something, we're not the author anymore. Mm. The people that receive it are the author. Remember oh. I have this story where like if we're like a dog running in at the beach uh, and we make a design with our feet, mm -hmm. we don't know that it's fucking art, but someone can see it and it says, I love you. Or mm. it says like, go fuck yourself. Yeah. So the, the person that reads it, receives it, is the one that decides. Oh, wow. So you just don't worry about, I, I don't worry too much about like what I think other people are going to think about what I do. Yeah. Because I can't, I can't like control that. Yeah. So let you them crystallize. You crystallize my thoughts and the whole thing. That is, if we can get behind that idea and yeah. you let it go, you're gonna make better stuff and you're gonna sleep better at night. So that yeah. is an excellent, excellent. You 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 did it better than I did. Way way to fucking shit all over my parade. <laughs> better than me. I'm sorry, Fuck. man. I'm sorry, man. I'm just. Fuck. I, we're gonna I edit it out. No, no. <laughs> we're gonna yeah, edit I'm it gonna out. Ed edit everything out but me. <laughs> me, I'm a singer. <laughs> 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 Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> Damn, dude. Oh, for, Caleb, I have this book you mentioned. Uh, um, you mentioned you like Tom Waits. I don't know. I'm sure you might have read some of this or have some this book. Do you know this book? Uh, let's see. Uh, no, that is one I don't have. I have like five Tom Waits books. I have to get that. It's like all any like all his interviews and encounters. Like, and it goes by the album, and it's like that's amazing. It's Tom oh, yeah, Waits. Dude. It's have you read it? I've o I've just I I open it up and I start and like I just see yeah. he's oh yeah that's a, you could skim that that's awesome I'm gonna pick that up thank you yeah super cool and like he's just like he trolls his interviewers <laughs> oh yeah I stole a lot of my humor uh, from Tom Waits and Peter Steele they are my main influences of, as a vocalist even though I don't sound like them mm -hmm. they were my two main guys which is my little secret damn damn that's so cool dude. Yeah. Oh fuck! Thanks for being on the show. Yeah, you were fucking so awesome. Much, this dude. is absolutely. You guys, when you did it, uh, get it all edited. Send me the details, and I'll uh, I'll promote the fuck out of it. Um, fuck yeah! You. And see if we can get some uh, some of my weird fucks on here to listening. So uh, I appreciate it, guys. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Yeah! Oh, that was badass. Thank you, Kalen Chase. Yeah, man, you were super fucking badass, and it was so fun talking to you completely inspirational it makes me want to write music and keep working at this career yeah and everybody please like and subscribe it really does help yes yeah. put us on the right algorithm and all of that and thank you so much to lewitt microphones the best microphone in the world the best microphone you can get is lewitt microphones okay bye guys bye guys see you next week yeah i get to